All right, you're watching Good Morning Nigeria. And um, as a prompt for our conversation this morning, we have excerpts um, of the former, the earlier conversation. We'll see you shortly. The past is in the eyes of the present. Uh, you will uh, know that side by side, legality and illegality have existed uh, from time immemorial. And therefore, even the educational system is not uh, insulated uh, from this notorious fact. Uh, we have uh, responded and reacted as an institution uh, to some of these issues over the years. So if we, to, if we will spend about 1.5 million for two years to get a PhD in Benin, you will spend practically less than that to get a bachelor's degree in Benin or Togo. So this is one of the reasons why young people are running away to these countries. I think that uh, as a country, we need to, we need to de-emphasize on uh, uh, paper qualifications and also emphasize on the skills, uh, demonstrable skills that, that individuals, you know, more or less are expected to acquire to, through a particular program of, uh, of uh, a degree program. Uh, we need to double check with the authorities, the competent authorities. There is a process of granting recognition and license. And then you, we have to give you the stamp of authority to mount any program. And then we undertake the resource assessment. The resource assessment is a very serious business of, you know, ascertaining the quantity and the quantum and the quality of resources available, human, material, you know, that ecosystem, including ICT, that enables you to mount a program. And like the vice chancellor of the University of Georgia mentioned, when a program matures, it is eligible for, you know, accreditation. We now constitute experts, subject experts, that visit those universities. We have a checklist. We look at the staffing, we look at the learning resources available, the academic areas, uh, the, the general ecosystem, and we issue a pronouncement. Right, thank you, Ibrahim Dan Hamidu, for the excerpts. And to begin our conversation, guests are already seated uh, in the studio. Professor Yakubu Abokio Chefu, who is uh, Secretary General Committee of uh, Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities and Secretary General Committee of PR Pro Chancellors of Nigerian Federal Universities, we welcome you to Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you. Good morning, viewers. Right, and uh, we also have uh, Gali Sherif Ibrahim, uh, Associate Professor of Political Science and HOD Political Science and International Relations. It's good to have you on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigeria. And we also have here another professor, Professor John Abure. He's a professor of management and development, founder and chairman, Center for Child Care and Youth Development is also a former director of the National Youth Service School, NYSA. Professor Abure, uh, we're glad that you could join us for this conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, we also have here in the studio Dr. Adeni John, his founder, president, global, uh, former deputy registrar of College of Education, Ilemona, Kwara State, and registrar, Chartered Institute of Educational Practitioners in the UK African Regional Office. Dr. Adeni John, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay. Victor. So let me begin with um, uh, Professor uh, Uchefu. What is your assessment of how bad the issue of uh, certificate racketeering is in Nigeria? On a, on a scale of 1 to 10, um, 10 being the highest and uh, one being the lowest. Uh, I, will I will rank it at two uh, and state that the transition from secondary schools <laughs> to universities and other tertiary institutions is where you have the largest number of forgeries. Um, and we see that regularly uh, when you understand that the minimum entry requirement for coming into the university system requires that you have five degrees at not more than two cities with a credit in English. And if you want to do a social science or science subject, you must have maths. 
you find we find a lot of students who have deficiencies, either a past seven in these two subjects, you know, and then they try to make it make it up. So at the screening, um, when they are getting to the university, some of them escape the screening processes because of last minute delays and rushes to in order to meet matriculation deadlines. But when the second screening is done before they graduate, we see that a lot of them get um, rooted out of the system. So uh, that would be my quick answer to, to the question. However, that doesn't, uh, because it doesn't seem to tally, if you say two, that's uh, pretty low, because in the wake of uh, the investigative report, which has thrown all of this up, um, the feedback that you would get from across the society is uh, such that it is not that low. It is somewhere, maybe at least somewhere in the middle. I, I would disagree with that, and I, I, I'll wait to see where the empirical evidence is coming from to state that. Because for those who operate the system, you cannot say 50% of the total number of certificates that are issued or that emanate or that are found in public domain. Um, no, not in public domain, no, from particular places. Yeah, like outside of this country, neighboring countries. I think that's the issue here. No, I, well, I, like I said, uh, um, until we see the empirical evidence, because what is also coming out from testimonies in these countries is that, yes, there are challenges with, the, with certificates, yes, there is racketeering going on, but the incident is not that high. All right. I, I, well, you, you seem to, uh, your, your, your opinion seem to support, you know, what the uh, current and you see uh, boss did say he was on this program I think two days, two ago, days ago two days ago um, he didn't express any uh, surprise uh, but what he did say was that um, the, the rate the increasing rates what what was alarming you know uh, racketeering you know had been going on even mm -hmm. within you know our institutions mm -hmm. local institutions mm -hmm. but that the rate at which you know um it is growing even going beyond our shores it's what is of great concern now but if we look at the racketeering forgery when we were reading our banters we made mention that in some you know uh, 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 suspects apprehended even gave a breakdown of the cost, you know, cloned ID cards, you know, fake, uh, you know, bank tellers, mm. fake it's degree certificates, fake uh, tuition, you know, whatever. It's so alarming. I don't know, Professor Bure, what do you make of all of these? Is it not shocking that we know that certificates racketeering has been going on and yet, you know, we, 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 we just fold our hands and, and are complacent about the whole thing. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, what we are experiencing <coughs> is a reflection of the breakdown of uh, morality in society. Um, <coughs> I don't want to put a percentage to what is happening, mm. but I know it's been historical. I will say that uh, when I was in the National Youth Service Corps, for example, about 2003, 2004, 2005, we had serious problem of certificate uh, racketing. We have serious problem of graduates, you know, people who, were ne who never really learned, went to school, you know, being cleared and smuggled themselves into the Senate approval. We went through the, uh, I was then director welfare and we are sending out these children to go and teach others so we had a moral obligation to ensure that certain things were done we investigated we found out so many people had they got into the system with the news people selling granite in the campuses we are brought into it we made our report to the Ministry of Education Federal Ministry of Education I was happy they took action some of those universities uh, personnel were disciplined. There was the, also the parallel which will lead me to the question of morality I was talking about. We discovered really that there were camps in this country where 
people who didn't even graduate at all were being recruited for the National Youth Service Corps. Hmm. We'll be holding something in Nasara World. You see a parallel one. We investigated. We found out really that most of those people in those illegal camps were actually graduates. But somehow, somehow, they got lured, they paid money, and the rest of them. So their parents are aware of some of these things. That is to say the family values are broken down. And uh, the society appears to put so much emphasis on the certificate, uh, what uh, Dor would call the diploma disease, was eating the society very much. So we now come back to the present situation of having students coming from abroad. The NYC has had this problem for the past uh, 10 or so years coming out. And the last director general was very emphatic about this to the extent of setting the examination to graduates and say, no, you, we do not think, because they are so bad. You go to NYC, you see heaps of people, no, no, uh, papers no, of tests. And so what I'm trying to say is that if we are serious, a society is ruled by values. And when these values break down, are not respected, you don't expect anything good. The difference between animal and human being is that is the rule. So we, which, what, how are we going to look at it? Whether it's only 1%, whether it's only one person, it is morally wrong to have such people. But having said that, it's very, very morally wrong. Uh, I don't know which moral uh, theory we can apply to it now. Is it uh, utilitarianism? Bethlehem's idea that well, the, the greatest good for the greatest number of uh, people should, uh, should be used in evaluating or the rule. But I think here is the rule I'm emphasizing that Once we should be able to hold ourselves accountable that what we are doing, what parents are doing in ensuring or procuring certificates for their children is bad. And that the youth are watching their parents. They do not see anything actually wrong with it. Unless the moral you know, uh, foundation is properly redefined and followed, we continue to have this one. I have had occasions to interview these boys who went to who study abroad. You know, I, I, I was just going through you know, research, I don't know, gentlemen, and um, some years back, that's just about two, th two or three years back, the NUC also conducted, you know, some investigation um, following, you know, reports and, 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 and all that. And the reports, the outcome of that investigation revealed that 721 certificates yeah. out of more than 11,000 that were screened were found to have been forged. 95 fake graduates were discovered in the NYSE camp and 60 of them from university, Nigerian universities. Mm. Uh, now, I don't know, uh, uh, Associate Prof. Uh, Gali, does that not indicate a gap in the process of ad accreditation and admission in our Nigerian universities? It is actually all encompassing. Uh, why? Because I try to have uh, an eagle view, you know, into this particular whole process. And uh, I made a decision personally to raise the issue of the causational factors. Causational factors having identified the problem. And the government in Nigeria, as well as Ministry of Education and relevant agencies, quickly intervened into this particular issue to actually issue the ban, you know, uh, especially on evaluation and accreditation of such institutions, not only in Ghana, Togo, extending to Uganda, Kenya, and even the Niger Republic. But having such a problem, it is a problem that periodically, you know, emanates from where it comes from. But what are the causational factors? If we are not able to deal with the causes, of those factors that precipitate into having Nigeria and Gulf into this particular uh, hullabaloo, then we continue to actually experience it even after now, just like you said. 
in every organization, per starter, institution of government, and even private uh, institutions, if you shall visit and carry out a drastic screen, scrutiny, you know, of the employees, you surely get this category of people who are still making use of fake certificate, certificate and many will be gullible. Even uh, before you even talk about the causative factors, yeah. let, let us even look at the, the, the you know, mechanisms put in place, mm. uh, they, if, if, they, if, if, if they are you know, adequate or not. Mm. Because if you, if you take, for instance, mm. the fact that these things are happening within the Nigerian university system, mm. the university system is supposed to have a foolproof, you know, uh, 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 um, system of checking mm. the authenticity mm. of, you know, documents presented to it. Mm. Let me tell you, for instance, mm. in, in, in Nasrawa State University, mm. you know, you are warned, mm. don't use touts or fellow students mm. to pay your school fees. Uh, yes, school fees, because you may run the risk of receiving a fake you know, the, you are warned mm. at the point of going to make your payments. Mm. You know, the, the, in fact, they sound it to you. Mm. So if at the end of the day you come with it, it it's, it's discovered because they, they, I, I don't know how they do, but they did discover. So is it not the negligence of the Nigerian universities mm. that this is even, you know, let me use the word, mm. escalating? Mm. Well, that is why I made mention earlier, it is all encompassing, meaning that nobody is actually sacrosanct. Nobody is not involved. But initially, initially, mm. that is why I started by commending the government, by taking a prompt action, you know, in order to deal with the issue, suspending evaluation and accreditation. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing emanates conspicuously from the government itself. I give you this example, Claire. We said that improve the physical facilities in universities. You are fighting the ASU, who said, please improve the educational system, especially tertiary institutions. You fight back. We say, OK, improve remuneration. Nigerian lecturers are part of the most least paid you know, in the world. They say, OK, improve remuneration of university lecturers. You fight back. Improve anything that should improve the university system, you fight back. So what is the outcome? The outcome is that ASU goes on strike. Before you graduate, you spend six years, seven years before you graduate from Nigerian universities. Then what is the outcome of this? Students and parents now become discouraged attending universities in Nigeria. What do we do now? We now go abroad. Where is it, going, where is it that we're going to find a soft landing? to get our certificate and return back to the country. Then this has actually caused the exodus of Nigerian students going outside Nigeria to seek, you know, for knowledge and education. And the Nigerian, an average Nigerian man, if he goes out, there are those who will actually go into learning and even work in order to actually achieve the outcome of learning. But there are those who are not after the dedication, the time commitment you know, to get, to get in the knowledge. All we are after, not even outside, even in Nigeria, I discovered that students read not to know, not to learn, but they read to pass exams. This is, you know, all lecturers, all academics, all teachers should be able to know this. People cram just to go to the classroom and poor they have actually crammed overnight, not just for us to have a kind of long time impact you know, on ourselves as well as the society. So this is one. Then if you come back, you discover that education security is imperative. Just like political security, economic security, social security. All these are demanded in Nigeria, not only in Nigeria, but extension Africa and the world. But then you now try to assess and evaluate the level of security, you know, in all these particular sectors of the society. So it also replicated, you know, on the educational sector, if you try to discuss the security, you know, ambience, you know, of our society, how capable we are, how have we been able to nurse and develop that particular ability to securitize all these sectors of our society that makes our educational system vulnerable. On Sunday, I was actually lucky not to be on that particular road. 30 persons, you know, abducted 
even though, you know, we have the security measures as well as symbols, you know, put, put in place, but this thing is still happening. So we have not been able to securitize that. Apart from this, he made mention of morality. Of course, there is moral decadence, you know, everywhere. And an average Nigerian or an average human being, if he's not been deterred, he will actually do anything to, to satisfy his need. So that is why we need, first, institutional, you know, strengthening. Why? Because the government agencies and institutions are also involved. Omar Audu, while obtaining this recent certificate from a Cotton University, his passport or document were being stamped by immigration officers, you know, along the way, to justify that he has been going out of the country seeking for knowledge. Why is it so? Why should a government agent do that without physically seeing the person, without seeing the concrete evidence to actually justify that? So the government agencies are also involved when he made mention of moral decadence. Then apart from this, there is also, you might think, uh, you know, it's something out of, uh, you know, the ordinary for me to mention drug, uh, uh, drug addiction. Because we have so many students outside Nigeria, in UK, in US, in India, in China, in Malaysia, Singapore. Those students who go there, they finally end up abusing drugs and they'll not be able to graduate. While doing my PhD in China, I had a student from Madagascar, island of Madagascar. He came but he was just, you know, abusing drugs. I gave him my article to read. He personalized it and plagiarized it. He claimed to be his own. Finally, what happened? He mm -hmm. couldn't graduate. He was sent out of China, back mm -hmm. to his country. So okay. if these people return to Nigeria, now they look for a soft land. Where should we get this Dr. particular Gali, thank chip? You. I, I think we should just, yes, just, I, I wanted to yes. engage um, Dr. Denny John. Um, Dr. Gali has said it's a societal thing. Now, the issue before us is one of where Nigerians find it easy. Umar Audu spent 600,000 naira and they got certificates in six weeks or so that I would take probably four years to get and spend much more to get. The problem becomes, where is the filter? Why are we unable to detect? Because there have been allegations that there are many people with these certificates who are in key ministries, departments, agencies, and, and you know, spread across the country in strategic places. Why is it that the system has been unable to filter these people, particularly at the point of presenting these certificates? No longer checks because I know in offices, for instance, when you pre uh, present certificates, they do background checks. They check the institution, you claim to you know, write to the institution and get them to respond. They will check their books. So why is this failing? Thank you very much and um, thank you for having me. Uh, the current situation is uh, something that we all need to be worried about. It's a serious problem. And if we don't tackle it, it's going to consume us, seriously. You know, um, let's talk about the issue of uh, access to education. The issue of access to education in Nigeria is something that we need to look at. Because for uh, secondary school students that just pass out from secondary school, gaining access to local university is a major problem for them and uh, because of different level of layers that they need to encounter before they gain admission in Nigeria you know sometimes they are brainwashed our youth are brainwashed you know to do what is not expected of them for example you ask a child to write waek neko fantastic it is fantastic then the person you know um, participates write jam and at the end of the day you know, having access to that university becomes a problem. We all know the number of universities we have across Nigeria today, but even the one that we have, the, 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 low, the low income students that are supposed to have access to this education are not given the opportunity to have access. So whatever they throw at them at any point in time, they will grab it. So let's look inward. 
Let's look in world for and uh, first and look at the access to education of our people. For a child, at least for me, if I have opportunity to be in place of policy making, you know, there are some agencies that I will scrap. I don't want to mention because that is actually bringing a lot of issues, you know, in creating educational barriers for the indigents, for the meritorious students. So. You describe that, okay. What are the examples of these agencies? I don't want to mention. <laughs> because it helps us to understand. <laughs> okay, for example, let's talk about JAM. All right? If I am the uh, Minister of Education today, I will scrap JAM. And I will leave screening opportunity to our universities. Write your why. Because JAM itself is not a measurement for, for determining the intelligence of a particular student. JAM exam. Why EC is the major exam. So that is why you see the cutoff mark in JAM is 140. Not the, it's, it's not supposed to be the actual you know, gauge to measure a student, whether the student is brilliant. We have the West Africa exam, examination. We have a NECO exam. So when we scrap that, you do your YEC, then you, you apply to your university. Then it's high time we begin to have specialized university. You see why universities having a lot of courses here and there, you know. But if you have, if you give room to, you know, to uh, uh, individuals that want to establish university to just like we have in, in, the, in the polytechnic, where we have mono, uh, monotechnic, where you can go to a university and just study maybe law. You know, you see that we're going to have a lot of uh, universities. So what I'm talking about is the issue of access. And just like uh, Professor said, that the issue of uh, morals, the issue of uh, the, our values as a country, you know, is fast disappearing. You know, right from our home, parents are also indulging their children in these acts. Even from YX centers, you see parents taking their children to miracle centers, you know, just to obtain YX. So a child that you are training to do such at that level, by the time he's been brainwashed by somebody else, he will just go for it. So a lot of things are happening across our border. So because your question to me is, what are the root cause of this? Of this, how can we? How can we? How can we stop it? But I can. I'm looking at. Mm. I didn't particularly ask about the root cause. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the filters. Mm. Okay, people go out of their way. The truth is, mm. almost everybody agrees that um, it's a case of moral decadence, right? Mm. You will never have that eradicated. Mm -hmm. Moral decadence will live with us. Yeah. There will be people who will be deviants, mm -hmm. who will not just want to do what they are supposed to do, want mm -hmm. to do the right thing. But what is society doing to check these people mm -hmm. when you bring those certificates? These okay. certificates yeah. came from outside of the country. Mm -hmm. So why are we unable to detect at the point of presentation, All right. whether to an office or to an institution? All right. You see, this, 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 this issue, get, there, there should be, there's supposed to be a synergy. A synergy between, uh, let's, let's take West Africa for example, and let's take, uh, let's use the Republic in this context. There's supposed to be a synergy, you know, to authenticate a certificate from NYC to Ministry of Education. Fine, there is, there, is, there is a system being established by NYC. I am aware that every schools from West Africa or anywhere in the world uh, they normally send a uh, uh, list of their student to the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. And from there, those names, those names of the university are already on, the, uh, on, on a particular book, you know, that shows and that. And so NYC is supposed to be able to, you know, get authentic check. results. Yes, but these guys. Was able to get, Umar Aoudou was able to get um, uh, to serve in court. Because by he the time. He was seen in NYC uniform. Mm. He did serve, Dr. Ab uh, Professor Abueri. Uh, how did he manage <coughs> to get this done? Okay. I'm happy. Within days or maybe weeks. Uh, before I come to that place, the NYC had already been pursuing a policy of preserving the integrity of the Nigeria uh, school system. For example, it entered into collaboration on its own with uh, NUC. We insist on, or the NYC, not we are no longer there. We don't uh, insist on bringing your jam resort to to. To the camp, we see it whether you were actually qualified to even enter an university. We even demand for your school certificate, which is outside just to maintain the distance. 
But what has happened, and is happening, is this. The man in question spent 600000 For everything. Yeah, for everything, for two years. <laughs> if it's a place we have values, values is upheld by the university where he went, values is uh, up, uh, the, uh, integrity values of head by the parents or whoever, such will not happen. In the NYC, he could have come in one. We are not, NYC is not, uh, is not uh, a police destiny. If you came in and we saw all the things you met, the requirements, you, you, you get in. But after, after the orientation, that person would have been caught because we have a post orientation evaluation where we screen every person that has been listening. If you have found one thing, you are sent back. I know that one still happened. We have a department. You are sent back or reported to the police. Whatever the police does is a different matter. Mm -hmm. Now, let us look at the problem the NYC is having. The NYC can easily command uh, reach out to institutions at home, you know, hold meetings and rest of them. The law says NYC is supposed to make contact with co producing institutions at home and abroad. But where is the money to make such contacts? So certain measures have to be put in place for now based on these things. NY there are some diplomatic problems. There are even legal issues that says, oh, we are not supposed to disclose the uh, student history to any person, right, you know. So when NYC even says, send us this thing, they rather send it to the student who you want to check, and that student can manipulate it. So when that boy came up, I, I know I like it because uh, the investigation was thorough. But then, there is no way we can, uh, no, you can be able to stop him because he has fulfilled all the conditions. Exactly. He brought it. That's, that's yes. what he but brought it. I was, I was coming to that. Yes. Because the issue is not that the Umaru <laughs> presented a fake certificate. No. That certificate he presented it's, is genuine it's from the institution. Yes. So now, the, the realists will tell you, I mean, the, the uh, idealists will tell you, okay, yes, morality. But the realists will tell you, it is not the issue of moral. It is the circumstance that Umaru found within that environment that presented the situation well, for him to again, exploit. For we, him we to exploit. Each and every yeah. graduate so, who has passed yes, through the university sorry. system yes. is entitled to serve. Yes. But NYSC should have actually strengthened the more its portal. So that when somebody is having a double application or entry into the portal, the agency should be able to yeah, detect that. That's so I believe that information why. technology let, let, is actually yeah, let me, that is why, let me, sorry, sorry, gentlemen. That, that's why I want to ask, is our educational system, in this case, the university system, culpable or vulnerable? I was going to yes. walk you through the process. Okay. When you are given admission to a Nigerian university, you show up for screening, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the university physical. physical. The university depends on authentication by third-party actors for the documents you pre present mm -hmm. because those documents are not their own. Mm -hmm. So it will cross-check with WAEC. It will cross-check with NECO. Ne and if those two agencies give you a pass mark at that level of screening, you are cleared to start your, commence your studies. I have so, my cleared, yes. so, uh, cleared so, Wayek, Wayek yes. sleep when yes. I was going to do my MSc. Yes. You know, so, and I was shocked. Uh, Wayek, I did in 19, <laughs> in the NATTs, yeah. you so, know, so my the, details. So, yeah, so, you are, you are, so the universities depend on third party actors, actors for authentication. The, re the JAMP results that you produce is not owned by the university, it's owned by JAMP. Mm -hmm. So if JAMP gives you a seal of approval, why gives you a seal of approval, NECO gives you a seal of approval, mm -hmm. university will authenticate you. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of, the, of your four years, before you graduate, That's before it. you go for clearance, the universities double check what they checked four years ago. Okay. And in, in, in a number of instances, we have found out that some people manipulated their their yeah, results, yeah. or some people, when they are their third year, want to introduce new mm -hmm. certificates, you know, because as at the time they came in, 
they used a certificate that they know is forged, but they now want to come in with the one that is authentic. And we look at the dates. You, you, you were screened in 1980. So you couldn't have gotten a certificate in 1981 that says you have five credits in English. It means that this, what you presented originally was fake and this is, you know. So it is on your, it's on your way out that we do this final evaluation and give you um, a degree which you now take to NYC, you now take for your, you now mobilize for your NYC camp. And NYC at its own level, because of some of the challenges, because of the presence of racketeers in the system, because if we found out, we have found out, and I uh, will be honest to Nigerians, that in some universities, at the level of the registry, there are racketeers who take advantage of students, just like you say in Nasrawa State, where they warn you, you know. There are some, stu some of them are even older students who will come and say, oh, um, they did not clear me because I have a deficiency in English. They say, okay, bring uh, 50,000, we'll, we'll sort it out. And then they will go, pay some money, pay some money to some uh, administrative staff, okay. and then they give you a, a, a clearance, and you proceed. Many of those ones are the ones that are caught in their final year, because once they cross-check the system, they find out that you're not supposed to have cleared, you got cleared somehow, you come into the system. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, we, when we do that process, NYC will now take compare notes, what you got from JAMP, what you got from Wayek and Neko, and what you got from the universities. Is, there, is, it, is, is it aligned? You know, does, does one balance out before they mobilize you to go to camp? But the point the um, uh, Associate Professor made is something that we also need to, um, to look through. That, and then, of course, uh, um, the Deputy ES of, uh, the Acting ES of NUC also made that yesterday, mm -hmm. that because of desperation that we see on a daily basis. You mentioned miracle centers, you know. I mean, I, I, my family owns a community school in our village. Students will finish, once they get to SS2, to register for WAEC, because we don't condone uh, this, their miracle status. They leave to go and write exams in places where they, con where they, they can do miracle, um, uh, they can get help yeah, to write their exams, exams. <laughs> you know. So these characters are there to profit on the desperation of young Nigerians, you know, at all levels. And this is where the problem um, lies, that we need to take it. So in terms of filtering the mechanism there, uh, the solution we, we are beginning to see is increased use of technology, where you don't um, allow any human intervention in the whole process. So registration of students when I see you physically, you upload your status. My, uh, my portal should be able to talk to WIKE portal, should be able to talk to JAM portal to have a seamless authentication process. So there will be no uh, comments at all in terms of the genuineness of your certificate. And by the time you are going to JAM, all that should also be done as well. Now that is for our own local institutions. For our foreign institutions, it's a big elephant in the room because it's I mean, at the level of the Committee of Vice Chancellors, I get requests from all over the world. Can you please fact check whether this university is qualified to issue award this degree? That is not our job. That is the job of our regulator, NUC. But people out there don't know, you know. And then again, these same racketeers take advantage of this desperation that we have talked about in the first instance. Mm -hmm. And then Nigerians walk their way through and come back with fake results. Uh, uh, and then, of course, they are able to manipulate elements in the system that are inbuilt to take advantage of these uh, um, uh, strange situations. Mm. So that's the that's, that's, that's point. Mm. Yes. As a matter of fact, when the NYC approach uh, NUC over this foreign listen, their answer is very legal. They don't have control. Mm. They have control over in Nigeria and, University, yes, because it's, but it's, not so uh, with foreign uh, co-producing yeah. institutions. But why I continue to emphasize the value system is this, value factor is this. Racketeering or manufacturing of a fake certificate or certification of people who didn't go to school is not peculiar to Nigeria. It's a global mm. phenomenon. Mm. And this has to be known. What are the motivations for this? There is request for it. People want to Demand. have higher degree out of prestige. Mm -hmm. And for this purpose, there are uh, universities or fake universities who are ready to manufacture certificate. So 
if less emphasis is put, if an individual has integrity, that look, this is not wrong. If the uh, Nigerian person is patriotic, that I don't, I shouldn't really do this one because the moment you bring false certificate, you are likely going to be given a position of responsibility like the National Youth Service Scout now. We send you to go and teach. And you are at the window expecting. This person teaching that primary you know, class to this student doesn't even know what is right in the, 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 the spelling of biology is wrong because he didn't even know this, this thing. So you have a responsibility to ensure as a patron that you don't even get involved in that one. And that is why I talk about family uh, uh, values. Why would parents who want to train their children go and buy a certificate? And the sad aspect of it, most of these people who had this money, who had the money, who can buy this thing, are also, are also the elite group who can influence their children to get better position in this uh, country. This is the sad aspect of it. And when you now give them that responsibility, they can't perform because they didn't really have the skills and the knowledge and rest of them for it. <laughs> Professor Pure, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I would also like us to quickly look at another angle that you touched on, that is the, the emphasis on paper qualification, uh, which is the reason why a lot of people want to get these certificates. Uh, but, but for now, the latest news today on uh, you know trending on the newspaper is that the NUC is or the federal government is probing 107 private un universities. Now this will probably seem to give the impression that you know th there's a uh, racketeering is you know uh, preponderant in the private universities. I, I don't know, um, Dr. Adeni Ujo. Yeah. All right, uh, I think our policy assurance needs to be strengthened, mm. you know, and um, a lot of has been happening in the university settings in Nigeria. The way we do accreditation in Nigeria, let us face it, you know, it's not what is obtainable anywhere in the world. It's about who you know, you know, people paying their way, university paying their way through, through the NUC, you know, to have their courses accredited. I'm a player, this over 25 years, you know, and we are, we are going to continue to have this type of news you just gave us because if I am not due for accreditation and I just create, go to uh, University B, borrow the attendance and bring to my university and call you to come and accredit and you travel all the way from Abuja and come to my university and you give me accreditation, then you don't do continuous quality control uh, assurance check you don't do revisitation to that university, then you leave that university for the next three years before you go there. You don't engage state ministry of education to carry out some oversight functions. So we need to decentralize accreditation. We must decentralize accreditation in Canada, in UK, in US. You know, the accreditation levels are decentralized. You cannot put everything on NUC because they don't have they don't have the ma enough manpower to do that. In Canada, provinces handle accreditation. Private, you know, accredit accrediting body comes in to accredit your university, you know, for quality assurance. In fact, you know, you 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 are proud when you get private accredited coming to you to do, you know, external assessment of your university. So that is why we are having this. The accreditation procedures in Nigeria is a, is a big challenge. And I can tell you for free that there's a lot of fraud in this. And I want the federal government to look into it. You know, you see universities that does not have enough equipment. They will go to other universities, they will borrow. They don't have enough professors. They will go to other universities and borrow professors to, for, for the purpose of accreditation. This is wrong. We need to face it as a country. You know, and once and for all. Okay, Dr. Gali, yeah. uh, sorry, uh, uh, Victor, I know you want to come in here. Is there, is there a nexus mm. between the number of universities that we have, therefore, you know, the accessibility, I mean, access to uh, these institutions by students, and. What is happening? Yes. 
Yes, of course. There is a, it is an arterial relationship, actually, because, uh, you know, having more than 200 and like 40 million population in Nigeria, and with the number of public universities, private universities, we still have qualified individuals who can still not be admitted, you know, into these universities. You discover that in our public universities in the A, probably in my department, we are allowed to admit like 100, maybe and 50 students. You discover that we have more than 500 students who are qualified to be admitted. Be admitted. But by the end of the day, they are qualified, but they can actually get it. So if the, why is it so? Because we have inadequate number of universities. Even though we have so many, if you compare us with other African states, but again, our number count speak for us. In some countries, we discover that there are just uh, uh, 15 million or 18 million. Some countries in West Africa, Central Africa, mm -hmm. Southern Africa, Eastern Africa. So Nigeria is a big country. So when we pontify the magnitude of our economy, being the largest economy you know, in Africa, so also we have having the largest number of professors, then we need to defend that particular status quo. Not for that particular status quo, to be abused or relegated. We need to look at how others will actually uh, recognize our certificate now because this scandal now will actually produce a drastic level of scrutiny to Nigerian certificate for those who try to go out and look for jobs. So therefore, we need in Wuhan, in central China, is just the capital city of Hubei province. We have more than 100 universities in Wuhan alone, just a city. In one province, even the province, is not the general, just the, within the capital. So looking at Nigeria, we boast of our capability, economic prowess, then why are we not being able to actually consume the number of those who are willing to acquire university students? So this actually engenders uh, 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 this issue of where do we go to look for you know, degree available. And if you see, private universities in Nigeria cannot compare with public universities. I taught in private universities and in public <coughs> universities. We know the, the nature of students being produced in public and private universities. So we know what, ha what, what is really happening there. But when Dr. mentioned uh, the issue of NUC accreditation, that reminds me. You have public universities, federal University, you know, University of Abuja, Federal University, Duse, and the rest of them. And NUC is coming to evaluate how far have you gone in terms of improvement, quality assurance. If you don't have the physical facilities, the NUC will not give you full accreditation. Or you even miss accreditation that year. Then who is to blame? The university administrators or the government that is supposed to put the infrastructure in place? That is the irony. NUC is an agency set up by the government. The university belongs to the government. And the government, the government does not improve the university and sending an agency to checkmate. You know, the university again. The university will be moving helter skelter. To, you don't even employ. For how long universities have stopped taking new lecturers? And the new scandal was that you even have to go through the civil service. Okay, when what, what do we do? I think that has been taken care of. What do we do now? Let's begin to look at what can be done now. No, what can be Remedy. Done, what can be done is that strengthen these institutions. Jam. That is why when Prof mentioned jam, we agree that the, we have criteria. You know, mm. like jam, you are not allowed to apply twice. To mm. buy jam from twice. Mm. If you do that, you might even be punished. Jam will discover that. If you come to my university, you cannot apply for postgraduate twice. Maybe you are looking for masters in international relations, you are looking for masters in political economy. We definitely detect that. So, Umar Audu previously served. So when he filled the form for him to come for the Sorry, second time, because he said that he was afraid to go to the camp, that something might happen, he could get arrested. But he got that mind to really go there. So when he went to the camp, he was screened and he was issued his kit. The letter, the money, the first uh, uh, allowance paid to him, he said he had to return the money, 36,000 naira. The kit given to him also, he also had to send it back to NYSC. So what we are saying here, <clears throat> this is an era of information technology. Mm. You understand? You are not allowed to serve twice. So 
why should you apply to sub twice? Even though we are more concerned about Nigerian universities, not even to talk about NYSE considering where the certificate, the certificate comes, comes from. from. Like, but the individual presenting the certificate, he had registered before, he had served, he has been paid allowances previously, and now he's coming for, this, for, the, for the same time. That is cyber security. Where is it? The portal you have, the register, should have detected that this person had served, has been receiving NYC allowances, you know, before. So now we need to strengthen this information. Immigration service, you know, this is West Africa where we have free movement. And now with the Africa continental free trade area, <laughs> area there is this promise that Africa will be borderless so that we can move freely without visa. So if our immigration system is not strengthened, it's not actually dependable, they will be, it will be experiencing so many incongruities, you know, within our borders. So then parents, as he said, I experienced a situation in which probably part of these returnees from Europe, this, the, the, the kid was there seated, and she was expecting the mother to be going office to office, doing registration for her. And the parent had accepted huh? that. And as he, as he said, <laughs> some parents will even agree to buy such certificates because they are the ones who will pay for it. <laughs> Victor, okay, I think we need to Dr. move Gally, on so that we get some other... Yes. I, I, you know, the Umar Audu's report mm. is more an indictment on the Nigerian system, system. Yes. rather than its education. Because the certificate did not emanate from Nigeria. Yeah. But that that certificate could earn him NYC an extra year of service with NYSE receiving um, you know, money from government mm -hmm. and get him, it would get him a job. Mm -hmm. And that was what Umar Audu set out to show, to prove that this thing happens in society, which is why we're having this conversation. And, and there is uh, another and, issue, sorry, there is another issue. You know, we have so many parastatus and agencies, government agencies now, that people are hidden with this kind of certificate. That, but where, again, they have a cover. That's where you I'm cannot going. even carry because out the screening for those people to be fished out. Because if I'm a director, I bring in this kind of individual, I should not allow a screening that will flush him Every out. Every system, I think, should have its checks and balances. And balances. Every system should have it. For instance, mm. and some of these things are just common sense. Mm. You have someone who claims uh, to be XYZ age, mm. and when you check the certificates through to primary school, mm. you find out that uh, if we go with this certificate, this person is claiming to have been in primary school or to have finished primary school at the age of one mm. or the age of two. You don't need anybody to tell you. Mm. He can prove that at one he was in primary six. Mm or even in five, that many skip one year now. Mm -hmm. And so these systems, it, it, it comes with a lot of indictments mm -hmm. for Nigerian institutions, mm -hmm. which need to be strengthened. Mm -hmm. The porosity of institutions, institutions not having checks and balances, mm -hmm. and we allow these things to go. So this is where mm -hmm. the matter is. How do we begin yes. to I check think, all of this? I think, Professor Chefu, uh, yeah. yeah. what, what do we do? We're, yeah. we're running out of time. Yes. What, what can institutions do? And well, the institutions have already started doing so, which is to deploy uh, enterprise resource management technologies using distributed ledger as a database management system mm -hmm. to make sure that there's a seamless handshake between these various agencies and eliminate the role played by individuals. Uh, these days, you cannot go and register for a course in a university manually anymore. You know, you have to register online. You cannot write an exam if you have not done your registration. You cannot get a, 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 a semester's report, you know, if you have not gone through this process. It starts by paying your fees. You know, from paying your fees, it, the portal allows you to do your registration gives you an exam number, allows you to write exam. And so, so it is technology that is going to help minimize. It will not eliminate it completely. Uh, completely, but it will reduce it to a barest minimum. And then more importantly, it will make it easy for, for, for you to be detected mm -hmm. if um, you are found, um, uh, if, you, if there's an uh, integrity issue that has arisen over the years. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm happy to, uh, to say that many Nigerian universities uh, I can speak for universities, are already making huge investments in this type of high-end technology 
deploying ERP solutions uh, with very robust databases, uh, with very strong reporting engines yes. to be able to manage that process of registration, school fees payment, registration, yes. uh, examination processes uh, up until the point that you graduate. Absolutely. Even the learn deployment of learning management systems, mm -hmm. you know, that has learning analytics embedded in it are things that Nigerian universities are beginning to, in the last five years, you see a lot of universities beginning to do so. Um, so I think that is where we're going to really put a lead on this, uh, this challenge. Uh, uh, and I think that uh, technology has to now be used, uh, particularly. We, we run out of time almost completely, but I can give you 30 no, seconds. Okay. Uh, no, like, you, like Professor Abore, please, just, okay, just, just hold on, Professor Abore, please. please. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, first of all, let me appeal to the Federal Minister of Education the blanket approach to the question at hand, uh, to me, will bring more problems to young, young people. I've worked work for young people for a long time. There are good ones among them. There are ones who went to genuine school. So when you do that one, you're going, you're going to put those people at uh, risk or disadvantage. So we should quickly review it and make sure that the genuine ones are there. Then there is the question of consequence management. I've always said this one. Once Crimes are bound to happen. What checks plan is the ability to, you know, to, 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 to punish those that are found guilty. Once that consequence management is not in place, you are wasting your time. The, N no, the NYC reports people, how many of them? I do know the one we caught in Nasara, what they went to J. But this has to be intensified. I will quickly go through the, 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 the NYC went, went to, had a meeting with African uh, university uh, managers and the DG made salient observation. One of them is to say, let us intensify our uh, diplomatic and legal uh, connection with these uh, countries. That uh, the, 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 the Nigeria should have dipl uh, a diplomatic desk officer who will be uh, interfacing with these universities and ensure that they bring, you know, they at least are given to them and they send to us here in uh, Nigeria. That why it is easy for people to fake this, that the, some of these universities use very, very poor uh, quality papers. They should improve on this so that uh, fake people will not be using and uh, taking advantage of, of, of them. But the major thing really, they are saying is that one, the certificate will always be there. Once they are caught, the due punishment must be met. Okay. So far, so good. The, you know, so far, this well, has well, not right. been the. Uh, Professor yeah. we would like to thank you very much for your time and uh, thoughts with uh, taking all the time that we have available. <laughs> let, let, let's thank Professor Abure and um, uh, Professor Chefu, uh, Dr. Gali, <laughs> and. Um, Dr. Adeni, I, I had announced 30 seconds for you. I don't know if you can fit into that. Yes, yes. what I, is just a suggestion. You see, just like our sub, uh, certificates from Nigeria to other countries have been subjected to, uh, you know, checks. Yeah. You know. We should also be able to subject should, yes. to checks. Yes, so once you bring certificates from questionable countries, for example, let's subject them to, they well, call well, it... I, um, uh, what do they call it? Can you borrow that I one? I think the government announcing ban, at least this blanket ban on those, even though it has its own issues, where yeah. that's a subject. Exactly. That so we day. need to then, there's something to that I'm aware, because just like Professor said, there are good numbers of schools in Benin Republic. You know, they have also introduced uh, a French proficiency test, okay. you know, to cultivate right. this uh, menace. Thank Dr. you. Dr. John Adeli, yeah. thank you very much for thank your time. We'd like to thank all of you gentlemen for... I'm making out time to join us on this conversation. I, I'm not sure we've exhausted it, uh, but well, good morning, Nigeria. It's ongoing. We'll take some spots now. Thank you. Bayer Leverkusen have announced that Victor Boniface will be out for three months through injury. Leverkusen made the announcement in a post on their X handle. Boniface suffered the injury in the Eagles training camp in Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates in preparation for the Afghan 2023. Due to the injury, he missed the Eagles' two friendly games against the local club in Abu Dhabi and Guinea. Victor Boniface suffered a muscle tendon injury in the right adductor area during the Nigerian training camp in Dubai, the club stated. Meanwhile, Ojasini striker Terra Mofi has been called up as a replacement for Boniface. In England, 
Chelsea missed a host of chances as Championship side Middlesbrough earned a slender advantage in the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final at a boisterous Riverside Stadium. Hayden Hackney scored the only goal, opening up his body to slide home an Isaiah Jones cross in the first half. Cole Palmer missed three presentable opportunities as Chelsea, who had 18 shots but only five on target, failed to score for the sixth time this season. Colwell's got wrong side again here. And here is Jones against him. Oh, what a chance! Slid home by Hayden Hackney. Advantage Middlesbrough late in the first half. And it's come down that channel. And there have been a few mistakes in there. This one has been punished. They're looking to bring in a forward in the next two transfer windows. But it is unlikely they will be spending the huge money needed to land Brentford's Ivan Tony or Victor Sime from Napoli. All right, and that's good morning, Nigeria, for today. I hope you had a good drink of it. If not, we, of course, invite you to join us again tomorrow for another episode of the program. I am Claire Adilabo, after a from all of us. Have a good day. And I'm um, Victor. So if uh, the drink was not satisfying, join us again tomorrow. Do have a pleasant day.